Hey everyone, whether you call it ABS juice, glue, or slurry, the mixture of acetone and ABS is a very useful concoction. So let me show you how to make some. To make it, you only need four simple things. First, you need a container, acetone, something to mix it, and of course, some ABS scrap. First, the container. You want to make sure that your container is airtight, so it has a nice tight fitting lid. And you also want to make sure that it's made out of a material that can hold acetone without dissolving. Here, my container is polypropylene. There's a few other plastics which don't react with acetone, so you want to make sure that yours will not dissolve. The acetone. You want to make sure that you have 100% acetone. Um, you can pick this up at any hardware store. It's a solvent that you can find almost anywhere. Make sure that it's 100% though. I wouldn't recommend using nail polish or anything else that has added chemicals because that may mess with your slurry. The mixing device. You also want to make sure that this will not react with the acetone. If you're not sure, take a little bit of the acetone in the container and see if it dissolves in it. This is just a spare paintbrush I had and I tested it and it does not dissolve, so that's good. And finally, you'll need some ABS plastic. I'm using some leftover support material. It's a good way to use that used plastic. Um, you can also cut off bits of the ABS from the spool itself, but I'm sure you have tons of scrap left over, so just use that. This is in glow-in-the-dark green. Usually you want to match up the color of the slurry with the color of the object you're printing, just so that it looks better when it goes on the object, but you can use any color. I like to think that there's three different types of ABS and acetone mixtures. There's ABS juice, glue, and slurry. And as you move up the chain, there's more ABS in the mixture, making it thicker and giving it different properties. ABS juice is good for putting on your build plates, while ABS glue is good for connecting two objects together. And finally, you have ABS slurry, which is much thicker and can be used as a filler for any gaps or any splitting of layers. First, you'll need some acetone. How much you put in depends on how much slurry you want to make. Next, you'll grab some of your ABS and you'll put it in the acetone. To make ABS juice, you'll only want to add a little bit of acetone. Just grab a couple pinches and drop it in. Once you have it, you can close up your container and you can mix it. I find that just sloshing it a little bit will help it dissolve. It also produces a little bit of gas, so every now and then you'll want to release some of that. You also want to make sure that you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to be breathing this stuff for too long. It'll take a little bit of time for the ABS to dissolve. It's not going to be instantaneous. Just keep mixing it and eventually it'll all dissolve. After a little bit of stirring, you'll reach this. This is stage one. This is ABS juice. As you can see, it's very thin. It's still more like water than like cornstarch. And it's the perfect consistency to use as an adhesive on your build plates. If you're, if for some reason um, hairspray or any other kind of adhesives isn't causing your prints to stick to the print bed well, you can try ABS juice. It's perfect for that. You just put a little bit on, say, a Q-tip, and you kind of smear it on the build plates. And hopefully that will cause the uh, your ABS prints to stick to the build plate better. It helps prevent warping. So... If you take ABS juice and you add more ABS, after another handful of ABS and a few more hours of mixing and dissolving, you'll get to this consistency. This is perfect for ABS glue. You can see that it's not quite as runny as before. It has a nice, uh, it's a thicker consistency. And this is perfect for if you need to join a couple ABS prints together. Maybe a piece broke off. You can use this as a glue to hold those pieces together. So, in order to get to stage three, you're going to need to add a whole lot more ABS and give it a lot more time to dissolve. So I'm going to add another handful and we'll let it dissolve overnight. And we'll come back to see what ABS slurry looks like. So, after using nearly all of my scrap pieces of ABS, and letting it sit overnight to dissolve, you end up with this. This is ABS slurry. You can see that it's it's pretty thick. And if you use some of it, you can see that it just drips nicely. 
I use this stuff to fill any gaps um, in any printed AVS parts. If any layers start to split, then you can use some of this to kind of fill in that and act as a filler. So it's, it's pretty useful for that. It did take quite a while for all this to dissolve though. It took overnight and then you had to mix it and it took plenty of hours. So in order to dissolve a lot of the ABS in acetone, it will take time. And finally, no matter how tight fitting your lid is, eventually some of the acetone will evaporate away. This is a batch that I made of using natural ABS and I made this a couple months ago and as you see, it's pretty viscous. There's not much acetone left remaining in here. It's mostly just ABS. And you can repair this by simply adding more acetone to it. The acetone will dissolve the ABS again and it'll create a nice workable paste. So if your ABS slurry starts to get too viscous, you can just thin it down with some more acetone. So there you go. You now know how to make ABS slurry, paste, and glue. It is a very useful tool for the 3D printing enthusiasts, and I can't wait to see what you make with it. See you next time. To reconstruct the mesh, it just got rid of most of the back of my head. And so it looks like something out of a zombie movie. And when you're ready, you will put the print on the bottom, making sure that it's on, on in the middle, and place it over. Thank you for watching Hoffman Engineering.